When you think about the plague, the Black Death of the 14th century, medieval cities overrun with rats, stacks of bodies, and those creepy plague masks might come to mind. But the plague isn't just something of the past. It is still very much around and can still be deadly. So maybe keep your plague mask handy. My wife and I were living in New York and the news was on and she said to me, there's two cases of plague in Manhattan. And of course, the first thing I said as an infectious disease doctor was, how cool is that? Hi, my name's Larry Lutwick. I'm a professor of medicine at the Mayo Clinic School for Medicine and Science. My interest in plague comes from my work with the Program for Monitoring Emerging Diseases, which reports on and studies outbreaks throughout the world. Now, when we're talking about plague, we're not just talking about one thing. There are actually three major types of plague depending on what part of the body is affected, septicemic, pneumonic, and bubonic, which is what we think of when we hear the plague since it's the most common type. What is commonly called plague is an infection of animals and humans with a bacterium called Yersinia pestis. This bacterium mainly lives in small rodents, but it can make the jump from animals to humans, making it a zoonotic bacteria. Now, there's usually a vector host, and in the case of the bubonic plague, it's the flea. Most of the time, a person who's infected with plague is infected through a flea bite, where the flea tries to feed on you and regurgitate some of the bacteria from the upper intestinal tract into the bite site. Then the organism starts to replicate and spread through the local lymphatic system into the lymph gland, once there, the bacteria begin producing toxins that do two things. They disrupt the body's regular inflammatory response and evade detection by defense cells called macrophages. So now, with little standing in their way, the bacteria are able to multiply quickly in the lymph nodes. With bubonic plague, the classical manifestation is the bubo, which is an extremely tender, very large, swollen, boggy lymph node with redness around it. And it's said that if you have an individual who is sort of groggy or somewhat altered related to the infection, just by pushing on the bubo, it's so tender that they tend to wake up and move around and you know, yell at you. But if you do come across someone with a bubo, please don't try this. Other symptoms may include fever, chills, body aches, nausea, and vomiting, all of which can usually take anywhere between one and seven days to pop up. But probably the most important thing to keep in mind is that timing here is crucial, because things can go downhill quickly if treatment isn't started immediately. And that goes for all three types of plague. If treatment for bubonic plague doesn't work or is administered too late, or if the bubonic stage doesn't occur, then the bacteria can continue its spread from the lymph nodes into the bloodstream, where it starts to multiply. Called septicemic plague, this is a much more serious infection, where patients can develop shock, bleeding into the skin, and most recognizably, the skin can turn dark and die. And that's presumably what the Black Death was, the septicemic phase of the illness. And then there's pneumonic plague, which is the most dangerous out of the three, where the bacteria has spread into the lungs. It's the rarest form of plague, but unlike bubonic and septicemic, pneumonic plague adds a wild card, human to human transmission with the bacteria spreading via infectious respiratory droplets. And because of its potential as a biological weapon, the plague is a Category A pathogen in the US. It's not going to go away because it's endemic in an animal population. That's one of the reasons why we were able to eradicate smallpox. Because smallpox was not a zoonosis, we were able to immunize around it and eradicate it. Diseases that are zoonosis pose a particularly difficult problem in eradicating them. But the good news is that we're no longer in the 14th century, and we've got plenty of antibiotics to treat plague, which usually seem to do the trick. Currently, fewer than a dozen cases pop up in the U.S. on average every year, and between 1 and 3,000 cases are reported around the world. There have been vaccines. There was a killed plague vaccine that was used in the military through the Vietnam War. It's no longer really used. There are some other vaccines that are undergoing studies in various parts of the world, but currently there's not a licensed plague vaccine in the United States. It's difficult to get adequate funding to produce good, safe, effective vaccines for diseases that don't really affect the developed countries. 